Well, hello and uh, welcome everyone to the seventh Carbon webinar. My name is Nigel Marks and on behalf of the Australian Carbon Society and Curtin University, we are delighted to be online once again with our carbon colleagues around the world. For those in the Americas, uh, good morning. And for colleagues in Europe and elsewhere, good afternoon. And for those in Australia and Asia, good evening. So before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this session is recorded and will be available on YouTube afterwards. Uh, as always, the links to YouTube are available on the Carbon webinar website. After the presentation, there'll be an opportunity for a question and answer session. To ask a question, please type it into the Zoom chat box indicated by the graphic on the screen. So feel free to type your questions into the chat box uh, during the webinar. Uh, and after the presentation, I will read out the submitted questions and our speaker will have a chance to respond. And once the formalities of the recorded webinar are concluded, I commend you to stay around a little longer for an informal uh, video chat using an online platform called GatherTown. We've had increasing numbers of people using this as a very nice way to uh, make up in a small way for what we miss with our in-person conferences. Okay, so with the basics out of the way, it's time to introduce our speaker. So I am delighted to introduce today uh, Professor or Doctor, I'm not sure, uh, Alberto doctor. from doctor. the CNRS in Strasbourg. Uh, Alberto received his PhD from the University of Padova in Italy. And as a visiting scientist, he has worked at the University of Lausanne, the University of Tübingen as an Alexander Humboldt Fellow, and also at Kyoto University. He's published more than 300 articles has an H index of 85 and was elected fellow of the uh, European Academy of Science in 2017. Since 2011, he is an editor of the Carbon Journal. His research interests focus on the functionalization of carbon-based nanomaterials for therapeutic, diagnostic and imaging applications and their impact on health and environment. And today he'll be speaking on the topic, safety concerns and biodegradation of carbon and 2D materials. Alberto, it's great to have you online with us. Uh, can you please now share your screen and commence your presentation? Okay, thank you very much, um, Nigel, for, for the presentation and, and Jacques for, for organizing this uh, uh, event um, that uh, somehow tends to, wants to replace the, the Cabot Conference that uh, we are all missing since uh, more than one year, actually almost two years. So we hope to see you, all of you in presence uh, uh, next year in, in London. So I try to, to, to share my screen. Uh, yes, here. And um, here we go. Option pointer. Okay, so. Um, is it a, a great pleasure to, to, to present uh, today uh, some of the aspects uh, uh, that are extremely important that are related to the, 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 the impact of, of uh, uh, carbon-based uh, uh, material, uh, let's say uh, 2D materials as well, but uh, I, I'm focusing mainly on carbon nanotubes and, and, and graphene, mainly graphene and graphene oxide, and uh, I will tell you uh, uh, what is important to, to assess with, with this, ma this material. I, I'm located in France, uh, okay, uh, Strasbourg is uh, uh, very close to, to Germany. This is our institute uh, with a, a brand new uh, insectarium, uh, which is also an animal facility because we, we have access to, to animal model there. This is uh, uh, our institute and my office is uh, over there. So um, if you have the opportunity to come to, 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 to Strasbourg, uh, you will have the, the pleasure to visit the, the cathedral. It's one of the, the, the oldest uh, building in Europe. Uh, it is more than 1,000 years old. And, uh, and it was the tallest building until 1874. Uh, and uh, you can see you, there is only one spire because the second one could not be finished, uh, otherwise, the, the, the weight of all the, the building was too heavy and it would have not resisted, but uh, it's a particular of uh, this, this cathedral. So, and there is also the Christmas market in, in winter time. Well, um, my expertise, uh, and I'm working since more than 20 years uh, 
uh, is uh, carbon based material and I started with fullerenes and then uh, I moved to carbon nanotubes and more recently uh, uh, we are working to, with 2D material. The interest is to, to, to make this material multifunctional by, by uh, controlled chemical functionalization with different uh, functional molecules. Uh, you will see some example, practical example uh, soon. We can make this material uh, um, cationic, so you can combine with, uh, with uh, DNA or sRNA for, for gene silencing and gene therapy. We have seen that carbon nanotubes, for example, uh, are uh, uh, responding to ultrasound, so they can be used as a, a contrast agent. Uh, one of the major interests uh, uh, is to, the, to, to see how this material uh, degrade, and, uh, and I will enter much more in detail later. Um, we are working on, on biomedical application of, of uh, graphene-based material. Uh, we also work on hydrogels and in particular in combination with, with uh, again, with carbon material to exploit the, 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 the photothermal properties uh, to, to have a controlled drug release. More recently, we have explored the, the, the carbon nanodots. Uh, this is a field with a lot of competition, particularly from, from, from China. I don't know how many papers per day they, 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 they propose the, the use of this, uh, this uh, uh, interesting material. And uh, this is something that uh, I probably will not cover today. We are also interested in other two types of 2D materials. So the outline uh, of my presentation is uh, about the, what we call categorization of graphene material. You will uh, uh, see what we mean for this. Uh, and then uh, I will enter into, into uh, the topic, which is uh, how the, the, the immune cells uh, react to the presence of such material. And then what is important also to, 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 to assess and why is important to assess the biodegradability of such material and how we can enhance the biodegradability by using a chemical approach and, and what we call biodegradation by design. And one example of a, a cancer therapy application related, associated to the, to the, 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 the capacity of the material uh, uh, to, to, to be degraded by uh, oxidative conditions. So uh, graphene is a family of material. Of course, this is the ideal material, uh, single layer uh, that should be a perfect uh, uh, structure made of only uh, carbon atoms uh, prepared by different methods, uh, by CVD or by, by uh, exfoliating using uh, uh, different conditions. But often we, we, uh, uh, we prepare a uh, few layer graphene. So the, 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 the the top-down uh, uh, approach uh, uh, via uh, liquid phase exfoliation uh, uh, allows to obtain mainly a uh, few layers, uh, three, four layers uh, material rather than a, a, a single layer or, or uh, a majority of single layer. And then uh, when we treat graphite with strong acid condition, we generate a, a material which is uh, uh, highly hydrophilic because full of functional groups of oxygenated species uh, that uh, make uh, uh, this material highly dispersible in water, while uh, graphene or few layer graphene uh, needs somehow dispersant to, to keep, the, uh, keep them uh, 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 stable. And we have also a, an intermediate uh, uh, material, which is a reduced graphene oxide. Uh, uh, if we remove somehow the certain number of functional groups from, from uh, uh, graphene oxide uh, using redux, uh, reduction of, uh, oxidation, we try, can try to restore the, the graphitic structure and, and uh, reduce the amount of, of oxygenated species. So we are in, in between uh, graphene oxide uh, uh, single or few layer graphene. And then in the literature, you can find uh, 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 plenty of different fancy names. Uh, uh, and I would like to ask you if you recognize the difference between nanographene sheet or, or graphene nanosheets. Uh, at the end, uh, we are talking exactly the same, of the same uh, material. But so what is important somehow is to, to, to try to, to define uh, this material based on their properties. And so what we proposed a few years back is to, to somehow to uh, uh, define the, the, the carbon oxygen ratio, the number of layers and the average dimension in the, this box, 
to identify what we call a, a, a graphene nanosheet or single layer graphene or, or something that is smaller in size or that is uh, uh, bigger because they, 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 they are more uh, uh, sheets and the sheets are, are larger in size. And behind this, uh, this type of categorization, the idea is to somehow to, to uh, associate these three uh, properties to, uh, to their uh, uh, behavior. For example, uh, are materials that uh, have this type of dimensions or, or uh, CO ratio uh, in, in danger for, for, for the immune system, so they provoke inflammation? Or are some other material in the same box, but with different characteristics, uh, uh, useful for 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 anti-cancer activity? And uh, this this is just a cartoon. But uh, for example, if you go to the literature, often you don't find the three parameters in, in, in all the papers. So you are somehow limited to to to. Uh, to find a correlation between uh, uh, the, the material and the uh, uh, eventually the biological effects or even other type of, of uh, uh, uses uh, uh, or, or effects. So what we did uh, was a sort of survey on, on, on the paper that were covering uh, the, the interaction of this material with macrophages. Uh, there are around uh, 50 to 60 papers available, but uh, a few of them allows you to, to, uh, to uh, recognize the, the three parameters, and then you can, you can have a, a real uh, uh, dots in, in this box. And what we have seen basically uh, looking at, for example, at this material that are uh, uh, somehow uh, geo graphic oxide with different size, uh, they tend to, 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 to have uh, an, an effect on cell viability that is uh, uh, dependent on concentration. Uh, they activate the macrophages. Uh, and so uh, we can somehow uh, uh, have a, a clustering and say that uh, uh, the, the, the material that falls in, in this, uh, in this uh, volume uh, are uh, somehow showing some effects uh, on macrophages. Uh, this is somehow uh, expected because the, the graphene oxide is plenty of oxygenated species and this provoke uh, uh, an activation of, of this type of immune cells. So then if you try to remove the, the, the part of the, fun, uh, the oxygenation function and restore the, the graphitic structure, we are in this uh, second volume. And in this case, uh, uh, the, the to cytotoxicity is, uh, is somehow reduced in comparison to GO. And then there is uh, uh, this volume uh, uh, with a few examples uh, that uh, uh, somehow show uh, uh, really no effect on macrophages. But this is probably due to the fact that we have a very large sheets and very thick material. And this uh, uh, cells that tends to internalize uh, the, 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 the material are, in, are indeed not uh, able to do it because they, they are, they, they, the size is bigger than the size of the cell. So the, the cell stay on top of this material and eventually they do not uh, uh, respond. Uh, at least they, 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 what can happen is that they, they, uh, they can be somehow activated, but it seems that uh, there is uh, less effect. So uh, this is uh, somehow to, 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 to show how the, the, the different properties can be uh, combined together and, uh, and uh, it would be important in the paper to find the, 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 the characteristic of, of the material and, and, uh, and um, de define uh, correctly uh, such material. So, uh, let me uh, uh, somehow illustrate a little bit more in detail uh, uh, some of the, the, these uh, uh, points that are in, in our box. Uh, we, we could uh, put our material uh, inside that box. And uh, I'm interested in, our, in, in my group uh, to, to, uh, to study the, 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 uh, the uh, primary uh, immune cells. In particular, we have access to, to uh, uh, human Im immune cells and, of course, uh, uh, also to, to uh, uh, 
uh, murine immune cells, so we, we, we can compare the, the behavior on these two species. And see uh, in the PBNC, there's a, this is the cells that are, uh, can be uh, uh, isolated from our blood. We have different components, lymphocytes, um, uh, monocytes, macrophages, dendritic cells, there are different percentage. And these cells are somehow responding uh, to, to and uh, adapting to the presence of exogenous molecules, but also to, to material that uh, eventually are uh, uh, in contact with, with the blood. So um, it is somehow important uh, to, to, to assess the, 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 the impact on immune system uh, and to prove uh, the safety uh, for in case of application in the, uh, in the biomedical uh, domain. But also if, uh, if we uh, uh, come in contact with the material uh, by uh, not in intended uh, way. So we compare first uh, the, uh, the uh, GO with different lateral size, and this is the distribution. We go from, from a few microns uh, uh, in size to a few hundred nanometer. So these three materials were prepared by, by uh, treating the, the, the graphite with uh, the uh, Amherst method to obtain first the, the, the bigger sheets and then uh, uh, under sonication, you can, uh, you can uh, reduce the, the, the size uh, down to, to a few, uh, uh, few nanometers, hundreds of nanometers. And uh, uh, then what we, we did, we, we isolated the, the macrophages from, from uh, uh, blood uh, samples, uh, human uh, uh, murine. Actually, from, 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 from mouse, we, we, we isolated from, from uh, the peritoneal cavity. Anyway, uh, you can see here uh, that uh, um, there is a dose response in terms of toxicity. So the, the uh, and the, it seems that the, the higher, as you reduce the, the size of, of the material, uh, the, the material is more toxic, and in particular, it's more toxic to murine uh, cells, which is a good news if you want to use uh, graphene oxide as a poison to the to, to, to eliminate the mouse. But this is going to be too costly, probably, and, and not, uh, not not very green. Anyway, besides this, it uh, seems that the, the human cells are, are less affected, and, and there is a, a clear trend that the more uh, smaller are the, 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 the geo, and, and there is a, a higher impact on cell viability, but also on, on activation and loss production. This is probably because the, 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 they are better internalized by, by the cells. So this is the loss production. You see that uh, uh, in case of the human cells, there is not much difference. At least there is no significant difference between uh, the different doses that we, we use and the different uh, size. Uh, instead, uh, the, the, the murine cells respond and uh, generate uh, uh, more uh, ROS, ROS, reactive oxygen species. So uh, they stress more uh, the cells of these uh, uh, animals. So then we look at, uh, to, to somehow to try to understand why uh, there is this difference between the human and, and, the, and the murine uh, uh, macrophages. It is because basically, uh, uh, and, 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 and also because, uh, between the, the small and big size, it's because the, 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 the internalization uh, is different. We use a Raman. Mapping here, uh, this that you see are not uh, graphene uh, oxide sheets, but are the single cells. And, and then with Raman mapping, we could identify the presence of, of the material inside the cells. So you, you see for, for, for the big size, this is a case of, uh, of uh, uh, murine cells, the, the big size are less internalized. Uh, then there's the, the smaller size it is somehow expected, and, and this uh, is the quantification uh, of the, this measurement. And, and we clearly see for, for the murine that there is a, a difference in, in terms of uh, percentage of cells that contain GO. You see 60% for, for the bigger and almost all cells uh, 
contain smaller flakes. Uh, is a little bit different uh, with human macrophages. They contain both 70% uh, or, or, or small and big size. So this is somehow uh, uh, support and explain why then inside the cells, the, the, this material provoke uh, more activation and more loss uh, uh, in, in the in the macrophages. Um, then we look also uh, to localization using transmission electron microscopy. These are slices of cells that contain the, the three types of, of, uh, of geo, both the human and urine. We could see uh, that the material is uh, uh, localized in the big uh, compartment, big uh, vacuoles that are present inside the cells. You see here, uh, uh, this uh, big vesicle, plenty of, of uh, uh, graphene oxide. Uh, this, uh, again, you, you can see uh, really these uh, cells uh, are able to internalize uh, GO. So then uh, we look also uh, uh, look more uh, carefully to, to localization. These are some other images. Uh, and we can see that uh, the, the material is also in contact with the cell membrane, like in, in this case. and. Uh, we, we found uh, uh, a, a, an effect that we, we call a mask effect uh, uh, with cells that are completely surrounded by, by uh, graphene oxide. Uh, this is extremely interesting because I, I will show you uh, uh, what, uh, how these phenomena can be exploited. So there is material inside, but there is also this uh, layer of graphene oxide that can, then can somehow uh, 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 isolate the cells from contact with other cells and, uh, and modify the, the, the cellular process. So in terms of, of uh, uptake, we made an hypothesis uh, of a mechanism that the, the GO uh, uh, come in contact with, with the lipid bilayer of, of the cellular membrane then uh, uh, is somehow internalized uh, uh, going through the membrane, and and, uh, and uh, this uh, this is one of the mechanisms. Of course, uh, being this phagocytic, these cells are also able to 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 uptake the, the material into into vesicles. So the, then there is a rearrangement of the cellular membrane that brings uh, the, the 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 material in this uh, uh, in this uh, cellular com compartment. So how we can exploit the mask effect somehow? Uh, what we can do is somehow. Uh, uh, modulate the, the, the cellular homeostasis, uh, and this uh, uh, have an, uh, an impact on the cellular activity. This can be modulated, but at the same time, uh, we can also exploit the fact that the, the material is internalized. So the cellular uptake can uh, uh, then be exploited to modulate the, 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 the cell in a different way. And uh, we can also make it uh, 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 targeting specific cells, not necessarily macrophages. So if you modify the, 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 the geo with a, a targeted ligand, to, you, you can target uh, other type of cells and, and then uh, use the, the, the material for, for, for different applications. It can be also uh, anti-cancer uh, use, anti-cancer therapy. Okay, so uh, uh, this was uh, uh, the discovery that we have made with graphene uh, oxide, but then uh, we were interested also to few layer graphene uh, and their impact on, on, on the, the, the again to, on the primary immune cells. Uh, for this purpose, we collaborate with uh, my colleague uh, and, and in Spain uh, who uh, use ball milling to, to uh, produce few layer graphene by integrating uh, with melamine, melamine then is washed away, but uh, allows to, to obtain uh, such material that is uh, 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 very uh, little oxidized uh, and then has a lateral size about a few hundred nanometers. And this is the, the TM and XPS analysis uh, and thermogravimetric analysis to prove that uh, there is not many uh, functional groups on this material. And this material is highly uh, dispersible in, in uh, uh, physiological condition. And, and uh, starting from the, these the dispersions, uh, uh, we try to see what happens when uh, this type of material is put in contact with the uh, immune cells. For this purpose, what we did, uh, we instead of isolating the, 
the macrophages, as we did uh, in the previous study, uh, we uh, look directly to the, the, the pool of cells. So we, we found uh, that, uh, for example, there is no impact on T cells, on B cells, uh, in natural killer. Uh, and then suddenly we discovered that the, the monocytes that belong, uh, that are together with this type of cell completely disappear. So this is the, uh, 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 the cell viability test uh, at uh, one dose. We, we did also a study on dose dependence. And uh, this dose, uh, uh, using a flow cytometry analysis, uh, uh, and the dot, and uh, you can see that uh, you you can uh, um, identify somehow uh, uh, the type of population that are present, and then you focus uh, with specific staining on, on monocytes. And in the control, the monocyte sites are there, but when they are treated with uh, with a few layer graphene, they completely disappear. This is somehow not a good news because. Uh, 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 this material seems to affect uh, the, the monocytes, but uh, we don't have uh, uh, in vivo experiment uh, in which, uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, in which uh, uh, we, re we, we could measure the, 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 the impact uh, uh, of this material uh, once uh, administered in an in 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 animal model. But uh, from this, we, uh, we ask ourselves if we could exploit uh, this modulation or reduction of the number of monocytes in, in, a, in a medical context. And there is one type of leukemia in which patients basically uh, have a huge amount of, uh, or a dysregulation of the amount of monocytes. So to, uh, to, to cure this type of cancer, you need to, to, to reduce uh, the number of monocytes. And this is uh, going to happen uh, in the acute myeloid leukemia or in the chronic myeloma monocytic leukemia. So what we did, uh, we had the, the, the blood sample from patients. So we, uh, that uh, uh, under, uh, were uh, treated with, with, uh, with drugs. Uh, to cure the, this type of cancer. So before the treatment, the, the doctor measured the, the, the number of, uh, of monocytes and then the, the specific drugs like a toposide that is used for curing this type of cancer. So we had a collaboration with a, with a medical doctor uh, who provided the, 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 the blood of, of six different uh, patients. Uh, and uh, we could uh, then uh, in incubate the, uh, the, the, the cells uh, with a few layer graphene that we saw inside the cells. And uh, what we saw is that uh, after incubation uh, uh, at different doses, uh, there is a clear re uh, reduction of the number of monocytes. These are uh, data from flow cytometry. And this allow to, to somehow to detect uh, the, the, the different type of, of cells present but, and then to stain uh, particularly the, 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 the monocytes. And you can see for, for with this patient, uh, there is a dramatic reduction, uh, uh, increasing the number of, of few layer, the concentration of few layer uh, graphene uh, in the number of uh, monocytes. So this could be eventually a, a, a possible uh, uh, alternatives to, to, to the drugs. And indeed, what the, we also tested is the, uh, the, the effect uh, of the, uh, the few layers in comparison to the, the, to the clinical use uh, drug uh, at different doses. And there is a, an effect on, on the other type of cells, EB cells, uh, this, this drug has a side effect. Of course, we didn't cure these six patients with FLG. Uh, the patients were treated uh, uh, with the clinic, clinical approved drugs, but uh, in, in our proof of concept, we could see that the FLG were less toxic to the, 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 the immune cells, uh, and still they were killing the, the, the or reducing the, the amount of, of monocytes, uh, and uh, they were a little, uh, even better than, than, than the drug. So uh, we have this strong effect on, on cancer monocytic cells to, compared to, to etoposite. So this is something that uh, uh, we were quite excited 
and, and now we are trying to see what we uh, uh, we can do and if we can go further uh, using a, a model of the disease to see if uh, this can be proved uh, in vivo of course not uh, on patients so then uh, uh, we look at also to few layer graphene uh, uh, on primary macrophages because the monocyte uh, in general they 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 are uh, uh, transforming in macrophages uh, and, and indeed a few layers uh, graphene uh, did not have a particular impact on, on macrophages on primary macrophages we could see the material inside the cell these are TEM images but then we look at the upregulation of the activation markers we look at the cell viability uh, 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 secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokine. And uh, we use a low and high dose, low doses, 10 microgram ml, high doses, 100 microgram ml. And there was also no effect on, on autophagy, which is an important process associated to the degradation of, uh, of uh, molecule uh, materials. So uh, since that this, uh, this uh, uh, FLG does not uh, evoke inflammatory responses and, and, and they do not provoke a particular damages on primary macrophages. And in parallel, we look at also to uh, B and T lymphocytes. And again, uh, there was no effect on, on cell viability uh, and, uh, and also the activation were quite mild, uh, no, no changes on the autophagic uh, activity and then uh, in this case we, we use uh, also use another technique instead of a TM uh, uh, we look at uh, uh, we, we um, label the FLG with uh, with quantum dots and we could see the the, the material uh, uh, and the inside the cells and we we stain uh, uh, the nucleus and the cell membrane and other uh, cellular uh, receptor in order to, to see the localization of the material in contact with the cell membrane or eventually internalized by these two types of cells, the T cell and B cells. And this is just to prove that the, the, the two doses does not affect the cell activation. While if we use a, a, a positive control, you see there is a cell activation and even the test positive control in the presence of a of few layer graphene, there is no sort of synergistic effect on, on, on activation. These are other, uh, other control to prove that uh, the, the systems, uh, the cells are responding uh, to, to, to some uh, stimuli. Okay, so uh, let me go down uh, now to, to the other important aspect that is uh, related to biodegradability of carbon and to the materials. And uh, uh, this is extremely important uh, uh, because uh, this material can be biopersistent in, uh, in the living body or in the environment, and this may raise concern. Uh, and then to prove the biodegradability uh, also helps to, to better define which are the risks when, uh, uh, when uh, we, are, we come in contact or if we use this material for, for different uh, application. And, and the biodegradability somehow is, is, uh, uh, is important to complete the, 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 the study on, on toxicity and also on pharmacokinetics, which is the, how the, this material is uh, uh, trafficking inside, inside the body or eventually eliminated. And actually uh, knowing if these material are uh, uh, degraded or biopersistent, uh, uh, allows uh, also to, to somehow to, to uh, design uh, uh, um, how to, to somehow modulate uh, with appropriate modification uh, and, and functionalization uh, uh, the effect of, of this material, what we call, call safe by design or degradation by design, which you will understand uh, in a minute what I mean for. So uh, again, uh, we, uh, we inserted the, the, the material into, into the box and these are uh, easily degraded, uh, some other that are uh, uh, not degraded and, uh, and some are partially degraded and this depends again on number of layer, CO ratio and lateral dimension. So uh, with this, uh, I would like to illustrate a, a couple of examples uh, with zymatic degradation first of uh, graphene. We, we thought that the graphene was more persistent and not degraded because made only of carbon atoms. But indeed, if you take uh, this uh, 
uh, human uh, enzyme, which is myeloperoxidase, secreted by neutrophiles during uh, 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 activation of these cells. Uh, basically, if uh, uh, we get a, a cold and we have a virus or, or if we have a bacterial infection in the lung, these cells come, they are activated, they secrete myeloperoxidase, myeloperoxidase uh, 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 degrade uh, uh, the pathogens, uh, but it is also able to degrade uh, molecules or, or material. So we treat uh, the, the few layer graphene uh, that uh, uh, we use first uh, before for, for uh, in, the in the experiment with, with the monocytes. This is the same material. And then we compare uh, with the material that we got from my colleague, uh, Len Penico, that uh, you know probably very well. In, in, uh, in Bordeaux, uh, uh, is able to, to generate single layer graphene. The two materials are similar in size. And then what we did, we treated this material in a test tube in the presence of myeloperoxidase activated by, by hydrogen peroxide. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is produced during the, the inflammatory uh, process. And you can see up to 40 hours, we could see that the material is highly degraded. There are plenty of uh, holes and debris, and eventually uh, uh, this uh, uh, is what we, we uh, saw with, uh, with TEM. Uh, uh, when we stopped the, the, the experiment, uh, we didn't go beyond 40 hours. This is extremely uh, expensive. The, 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 the myeloperoxidase is, uh, is a recombinant, so you had, you had to buy it for, from, from companies and it's not, uh, it's not a cheap experiment. But uh, we, we could see that uh, uh, the, the material is degraded. Add a few layer graphene or a single layer, and then you see the, 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 the control, uh, the, the, there is no effect on the, on, on the material if there is no, the presence of, of enzyme. So then what we did uh, it was to take uh, the uh, activated neutrophiles. So this is a collaboration with a colleague in, in, in Sweden. So they could isolate uh, the, the, the cells and we put the, the, the cells in contact uh, with the FLG or SLG. Uh, the, to activate these cells, you need uh, this couple of, of uh, molecules. This is a short peptide. And just try to remember because we use this uh, in combination with GEO and uh, you will see uh, how effective is in activating uh, the neutrophiles. And then this is another molecule. So uh, uh, once the, the neutrophile is activated, they secrete uh, MPO and then MPO uh, basically uh, uh, degrade the FLG. So we could follow by Raman in this case after five days. Um, the, these, these cells are quite sensitive in the sense that the, the, that uh, uh, you, net, you need to re, the renew uh, six, uh, uh, after, um, every six hours because they, they, they do not survive for, for a long time. This is uh, their job. So they, they secrete MPO uh, and, and then they, they, they need to be renewed. So up to five days, there is a clear decrease of, of the, the uh, graphitic band associated to FLG, and there is also the decrease in the band of, of the single layer gra graphy. Uh, we look at the, the, the ratio between the D and G band, and we see that we improve, we increase the number of defects on the material. It is less evident with SLG, and we also be, by looking at the AFM, we can see that the, the, the uh, after five days, uh, the material is, uh, is highly defective. So meaning that uh, uh, the, 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 the neutrophiles are, are able to, to, to degrade a uh, uh, few layer or single layer uh, graphene. So uh, in a previous uh, study, we, we look at also to, uh, degradation, to the degradation of uh, graphene oxide. Uh, we use three different types of graphene oxide, uh, and two were highly dispersed. Another one produced for, for, from a company uh, was supposed to be uh, uh, water dispersible, but eventually uh, it was uh, 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 somehow uh, depositing very fast. And if you look at the TEM, uh, this material is uh, 
supposed to, to be single layer gra 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 graphene oxide. Uh, this is produced by a company that exfoliated carbon nanofibers. And so there are few uh, fibers inside the, the sample. And this was the, 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 the material that was supposed to be uh, uh, dispersible, but actually is uh, very aggregated. And so this, is, uh, this has an impact uh, when you put in contact with the myeloperoxidase. You can see here clearly that uh, after uh, uh, addition of, of the enzyme, there is a sort of, of aggregation uh, are, uh, of, of the material. This is the, 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 the before the, the treatment, so the, the material is uh, still highly dispersed, and then it tends to aggregate uh, around the, the, the myeloperoxidase, most probably, uh, because we, we see that the, 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 the material interact with this enzyme, and eventually, after 24 hours, the, the solution, the, the dispersion were uh, limpid, transparent, uh, and, uh, and if you look at the, 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 the TEM, there is a, a material after 15 hours highly defective with a lot of holes and debris. And eventually what remain the TEM grid is uh, just a few debris. Here in this case, with the, with the presence of the fiber, there are few fibers uh, present, but still uh, the, the material is highly degradable. Why we, we, we saw only partial degradation because here, the material basically settle and the enzyme is not able to, to, to take in charge uh, such material. So this is a, a good indication that you, be, you need to be careful uh, uh, how uh, the, the, uh, which type of, of uh, graphene material you are using. So um, let me go uh, one step back uh, because we were interested to, to, to improve the biodegradability of such material. And we base our study in a previous study in which we use carbon nanotubes. And carbon nanotubes, in particular, multi wall nanotubes, can be degraded, but this takes uh, several, uh, several days. In fact, uh, uh, we use, for example, another type of enzyme, Horschradis peroxidase. This is an environmental enzyme, but uh, uh, it can be used to, to prove the biodegradability of, uh, of uh, carbon based material. We use it also for, with uh, graphene oxide. It has a, a, an enzymatic activity that is uh, less uh, effective than myeloperoxidase. So this is related to, to the redox potential. But eventually, we were able to see that uh, the, the, the oxidized carbon nanotubes were uh, uh, degraded by osteragis peroxidase. And then we use also a, a, a buffer that is present uh, in the, inside the cells that has also the capacity to degrade molecule. And, uh, and it is also ca ca capable to degrade uh, uh, carbon materials. And you see that uh, we were not able to completely uh, degrade uh, the, the uh, multi wall nanotube. But after 60 days, we could see much shorter uh, nanotubes. And uh, uh, in collaboration with a colleague in Paris uh, who is using liquid TEM uh, uh, characterization in water. Uh, under the, 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 the beam irradiation, we, you can generate a radical, uh, hydroxy radical in, in, in water, and these radicals are able to degrade uh, the carbon nanotubes. Here we uh, use functionalized carbon nanotubes and carbon nanotubes that uh, contain also uh, uh, iron nanoparticles. So you can see that uh, uh, very fast, the, 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 the tubes uh, contain, uh, have holes. I, I hope this video is, uh, is, uh, is uh, no, uh, is working. No, sorry, it, it, it doesn't work, but uh, it was basically the video that shows that uh, there are a sort of drilling uh, uh, process, but there is also a exfoliation process. You see here, these are uh, uh, walls of the, the, the of the nanotubes that are, are, are uh, somehow damaged by, by, by the hydroxy radical, which is the, the, the source of, of uh, uh, that allows the, the, the material uh, uh, to, to be degraded. So with this in hand, we, we ask ourselves, are we able to, to, to enhance the, 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 the capacity of the, the enzyme to, to, uh, to degrade uh, the carbon nanotubes? And, uh, and uh, we look at the substrate that uh, interact uh, with the uh, osteragis peroxidase. Uh, there are similar, there are similar substrate for myeloperoxidase. These are coumarin based or catechol based. Then we introduce in this experiment also another enzyme, uh, xanthine oxidase, 
and this is activated by by uh, purine uh, derivatives. So we generate uh, these uh, uh, these four uh, uh, modified carbon nanotubes, and then we compare in the degradation in the presence of these enzymes to the uh, uh, um, COOH. So we look at the, the interaction of uh, the, 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 the ligand with the active site of the enzyme. So the, the, the ligand is capable to, to, to enter or to interact uh, with the, the, the active site of the enzyme and, and, and as uh, somehow this enzymatic activity. And then uh, we analyze uh, after 20 days uh, the, the size of, of, of the, the different uh, nanotubes. Uh, these are the four uh, uh, functionalized and just look at here uh, uh, what is happening. So the multi-wall nanotubes are still degraded uh, when oxidized after 20 days, but uh, we have shorter nanotubes when they are uh, uh, functionalized with the, uh, this ligand that enhance uh, the, the, the interaction with the enzyme. Um, in the case of something oxidase, uh, the, uh, the situation is opposite, but uh, we need to go back to the design because uh, the, the, the pure in derivatives is not, is not on, uh, sufficient to, to, degrade, to, to activate the, the enzyme alone. So this is something that we discover along the, the experiment. But the other uh, functional groups somehow enhance uh, the biodegradability of the carbon nanotubes. And we did the same with graphene oxide. So we, we use uh, one uh, coumarin and one catechol. We use also the, the, the one control uh, with amino function and the starting material. So in, in, in the case of osteragis peroxidase, which is less potent than the MPO, we see after 20 days uh, a degradation of, uh, of uh, the GO. But uh, it is much more effective if you have a, 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 this type of, of uh, uh, functional groups that induce uh, almost complete degradation. Here we are a sort of a carbon dots. We didn't uh, not analyze further, but uh, it might be a possibility to somehow to tune the, the, the size of, of uh, graphene oxide. And there is less, uh, no activity when this ligand uh, are absent. We look at also uh, uh, Raman. You see there is a decrease in the intensity of the characteristic peaks uh, along the, the, the treatment. So this is another technique uh, to, to prove the, the, the degradability. And then we look also the interaction between the, the functional groups again and, and the enzyme. And then when you have GO, this GO is all around the, the, the enzyme. This is just a representation of one type of interaction, but it is uh, uh, much more uh, uh, somehow uh, 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 let's say uh, the, 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 the ligands are uh, 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 recognized by the, the, the active side of the enzyme, and this probably helps to trigger the, the biodegradability. So in the last five minutes uh, or less, uh, let me uh, uh, associate now the, 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 the material that has uh, biodegradability uh, uh, properties with uh, uh, the possibility to, to complex anti-cancer drug and use it in, in, for, for targeted cancer therapy. So here, um, uh, what we did uh, was to combine uh, the GO with this peptide. This is the FMLP peptide that uh, was used to activate the, the neutrophiles. So in this case, is, it is attached to the, uh, to the uh, to the GO, then we complex doxorubicin. And this peptide not only uh, somehow activate neutrophile, it's also recognized at the surface of cancer cells that uh, express a, a receptor that uh, recognizes this peptide. So we wanted to, to, to somehow to enhance the, the, the targeting of cancer cells and, and look at the biodegradability. So this is the, 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 the scheme of synthesis. It's very simple. The peptide can be combined with, with GO, then we complex uh, doxorubicin, we characterize all this system. And, and uh, let me just show that, uh, that uh, the, the, the system is, uh, is the degraded. Uh, what we have seen is that there are not, not much uh, difference in terms of, uh, of uh, 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 rate of, of degradation. The GO and GO with the peptide seems to be degraded at this, uh, at this same speed, so there is not a real an enhancement, but what is beautiful is that this peptide somehow uh, uh, trigger uh, and activate the neutrophiles and, uh, and, and induce uh, uh, 
is somehow self-degrading. So the, the platform, we can think uh, once uh, he has delivered the, 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 the geo, eventually is, uh, is uh, degraded because it activated the, the, the appropriate cells. And we follow this by, by, by Raman. We look also to the, the, the cell viability of the system. We look at the, the expression uh, or somehow the activation of neutrophiles and releasing uh, uh, the myeloperoxidase. So we could see that uh, once there is the peptide, the, the neutrophile release MPO. And then this MPO, you see here after six hours, the, the typical band of, of uh, 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 of the uh, graphitic uh, uh, structure and the defect of geo uh, are much, much less. So uh, this system somehow is self-degrading. And then what we did is to combine with the drug, uh, look at the, the cell uptake and the effect on, 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 cell, on cell viability. So this is the cell uptake. Uh, okay, let me say first that the doxorubicin enter alone into the cells. But what is important is that uh, the, uh, we need to control the amount of uh, doxorubicin because this is a, a toxic molecule and uh, it has often a side effect. So you see when combined with GGO with the peptide, it is internalized uh, uh, to a lesser extent, but uh, we can imagine that this can be done in a control fashion. And then we look at the, the cell viability after eight hours and, uh, and, uh, and uh, 24 hours, doxo, because entering a higher amount, higher amount is more effective, but uh, then uh, there is a clear difference between the, the, the geo with the peptide uh, uh, in comparison to geo uh, uh, alone. And the advantage in this case is the presence of, of this peptide that trigger uh, the, the, the degradation. So with this, let me uh, summarize uh, what I presented today. Uh, graphene material has a, a low cytotoxic effect on immune cells, uh, and then they are uh, uh, biodegradable, and probably this uh, effect, uh, reduced effect is due to the fact that uh, once internalized, they can be degraded by, by oxidative uh, uh, enzyme inside the cells or triggered by or released by, by the cell, uh, specific cells. And then the inappropriate uh, chemical modification uh, may enhance the, the activity of peroxidase and leading to a faster degradation process. And then uh, uh, the graphene oxide combined with, uh, with drugs can be used as a platform for, for drug delivery. So overall, uh, what we are developing in my group is that a multifunctional carbon material, and this can be used as a efficient platform for cancer therapy but also combined with imaging and with uh, thermal uh, uh, properties of, of the material. Uh, so we can also do uh, photothermal uh, anti-cancer therapy. So this is the, my current group uh, and uh, part of the, the collaborator that has contributed to what I presented today. Uh, I need to uh, thank the, the, the funding agency and uh, you mentioned at the beginning that I am one of the editors of Carbon. And so if you have a paper that uh, cover the biomedical aspect, don't hesitate. I'm probably the ending editor. And uh, let me thank again, Nigel and Jacob for the kind invitation. And I hope to see you uh, soon uh, at the con Carbon Conference. And thank you very much again for your attention. And uh, this is a, a quiz. Uh, try to, to, uh, to guess uh, what is the technique uh, to, to imagine this uh, and what these images represent. <laughs> if there is a prize for who, for who win. Guess. Thank you very much. Ah, thank you very much, Alberto. That was fascinating. I have no idea what that is, but perhaps someone can type in the chat box what they think that image was. Okay, so this is a long question. So what protocols have you developed in your lab to categorize the carbons you work with? I given nanocarbons change from vendor to vendor, I thought this the same, sometimes batch to batch. Have you set uh, an in-house methodology to standardize the categories of carbon you work with, e.g. by defect level, size, shape, of flake particles, yeah. concentration of impurities, etc.? cetera? Well, okay, the, uh, um, we, 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 um, 
we don't really do this in, in, in our lab. This is a very good, with a good question and, uh, and uh, um, it should be applied uh, uh, by the, the, the companies that produce uh, the different type of uh, graphene materials. Uh, what we do in our lab uh, when we, we have collaboration is to, 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 to ask our collaborator to provide all the information they have on the size, uh, uh, graphing or uh, an oxygen content. Uh, otherwise, uh, we use uh, uh, TEM, XPS, Raman, uh, EFM uh, to uh, re uh, character, re characterize the, the, mm -hmm. the material. Um, in terms of graphing oxide, we say there are not much differences. Of course, uh, you, you can play with, with the, the lateral size. Uh, this is the, the, the highest uh, 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 difference you can, you can have. Uh, uh, on, on graphene oxide, but in general, it's uh, highly dispersed, uh, mono, uh, mono dispersed, uh, uh, and uh, the carbon oxygen ratio is uh, very, very similar. But uh, it's true uh, uh, for for our study, uh, the, the first approach is to to, to uh, uh, determine the 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 the, the, the three uh, uh, parameters, and uh, and then uh, and then we we uh, we measure the the, the effects. Uh, uh, in general, the, the, the impact on immune cells, but we look at also the impact on other type of cells because uh, when we uh, we want to, to kill cancer cells, you, you are interested in, in this case to to to, to induce a, a, a cell killing rather than uh, being safe to to, to these cells. It should be safe to to the to uh, to uh, primary immune cells and 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 uh, no uh, and and uh, other type of, of uh, uh, cells that we have in our body. Okay, so I think we've got time perhaps for one last question and then we might uh, I, move our questions to, to gather town. Um, I see another question in the chat uh, that is related to the toxicity of carbon nanotubes. Yes, in fact, that's uh, very much related to the uh, question on the screen. So perhaps you, perhaps we can finish with the, the final question. The Both, chat. yeah. So, yeah. um, Jake, the question from Fernando, if you could. Yeah, 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 that. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so the, the the other big issue beside the the, the, the graphene into uh, into the vaccine is the, the the comparison between graphene and carbon nanotubes. Yes, that's. So uh, this is something that's something that uh, we uh, uh, we are also aware because uh, uh, there is a, 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 again a parallel that. Uh, 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 being uh, carbon nanotubes and a particular type of nanotubes that are very long, the long and, and aggregated, yes. Uh, can I can I go on? Uh, aggregated and and, and uh, uh, look like asbestos fibers. Uh, they are described as cancerogenic, but then then uh, people think that all carbon nanotubes uh, are are cancerogenic. And as a consequence, because, because the carbon nanotubes are made of a graphitic structure, graphene or graphene oxide is also cancerogenic. But the, we need to take into account that the, the complete different morphology, one is tubular, the other is, is flat. A, a, and we haven't seen a, 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 the same type of behavior. And in collaboration with my colleague, uh, Costas Costarellos, we have always the nanotubes as a benchmark for the toxicity studies, and we see uh, continuously the, 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 the nanotubes, the multi wall nanotubes that are considered carcinogenic, induce uh, 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 granuloma uh, 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 and uh, 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 into, into the lung cells, while uh, there is nothing is occurring, at least with graphene oxide or, or few layer uh, graphene. So the, 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 we have to. to to really uh, uh, distinguish the, the two types of, of material. Okay, well, that's really interesting. That, that was, uh, I'm very glad that you could finish off with that, that question. Okay, so um, well, look, uh, thanks again, uh, Alberto. That was a, a fantastic presentation. So um, the, the last thing to do before we uh, move across to Gather Town is just to remind everyone of the next uh, Carbon webinar, which will be held in just over two weeks uh, on Wednesday, the 6th of October in most countries. This will be a different webinar to what we've been running so far. Uh, and it's a chance to honor four early career researchers who've received 
uh, awards during the pandemic. So normally these young researchers would have a chance to present their work at a major conference. And of course that's been denied them. So there will be four talks uh, in all, they'll all be pre-recorded. So that will help everyone keep to length. Uh, and the speakers will all be available online for an interactive uh, Q&A session afterwards. So uh, please join us uh, in, uh, in two and a bit weeks time for four uh, excellent presentations.